The new Toro Time Cutter 2024 50 inch is in store. <laughs> it is. He doesn't like it. I don't. I personally love it. Stu's gonna try to convince me why the 2024 is better, and I am just so used to and love the 2023 that I think he's got a hard time trying to convince me to go against this old, beautiful Betsy here. We're gonna sit down on these machines and go through them bit by bit and break down what is new about this mm -hmm. and what we love about this. Sounds good, let's do it. All right. The 2023 50 inch time cutter has been one of our favorite products for four years now, Yeah. since it came out in 2020. Beautiful cutting, mm -hmm. turnkey, mm -hmm. Kawasaki engine, mm. fabricated deck. <laughs> you can't go wrong. No. It's like you're floating on air. But now you have this new, bigger, 50 inch time cutter has the same deck has the same Kawasaki engine and when this one is no longer on promo on sale they will be the same price so what do you do first question is is this one going to be available for a while more no no it's going away we have about 15 of these left in stock wow Toro has zero of them left in stock yeah my dad so going forward this will be the new normal but I can just say right now, you are in good hands in the new product. Yeah. So do not be scared. Don't be scared. But let's figure out why. Because I personally come from the service industry. I come from the service side of things. And like Sue said, we've been selling this for four years and it's been a fantastic machine. I've had homeowners with way too many acres buy this thing and use it way too heavy duty and it holds up really, really nice. I've had landscapers use it and it holds mm -hmm. up nice. Not that it's recommended for that, but God forbid you misused it. It is a heavy duty unit. And it does hold up really nice. Yep. And I have really appreciated the build quality and all the design features of this machine. And from a sales perspective, showroom curb appeal is what wins the showroom these days. And this has some really nice, shiny, fancy features on it. And we're gonna go over those now. All right, you sit on 23, I'll sit on 24. First of all, the seat has changed. My seat back is a good three inches taller but I'm sacrificing something here. Yeah. I don't have armrests on the 2024. It's $130 to add a pair of armrests to the seat. But there is always the argument, do you need armrests? Your arms are engaged, they're up, they're on these. Even if you're not moving, they're still dangling from here. Do you like armrests? You know, I only like armrests when I'm not mowing. When I'm mowing, I'm not using them. They're sure. actually maybe in my way when I'm mowing. True. I kind of rub my elbows on them and could cause a little chafing, perhaps. But okay. when I'm not sitting, I'm not using them. But if you were to park under a nice shade tree and kick back, sip on your beer while yeah. you had a little break, it's not bad to have them then. Yeah. Now, I noticed that I feel like I have a tunnel leg room on the 24, and I am a fan of that. These handles don't come near my knees. Bring your feet up a little bit. This one here which you have plenty of leg room there. My legs a little bit longer. They come quite close to the steering handles when I'm on the 23. And I'm shorter than Stu. I'm 5'11", Stu's 6'3". But when I get in this thing, I feel like I'm sitting on my daddy's mower. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you think about the handles? This is a new feature for Toro. It's been available on Cup Cadet and Bad Boy, mm -hmm. to name a few. It allows you to change your position on the fly, toolless. If you're gonna do it, you gotta do it right. And it seems like they have done it nicely. It's a nice big cast piece. A lot of customer complaints about with, with these is it has these two 9 bolts here. And you know, if you were to pull on it hard enough, you can maybe get them out of alignment if they weren't tightened perfectly. And uh -huh. then they might be a little bit off. Customers just don't even think naturally, oh, it's just an adjustment because these bolts are slotted and then they think, oh, I just gotta live with it like this. And I think that wing nut kind of helps people realize it's something they have ability to change and they're responsible to change. So True. I think we'll get less complaints True. about those being uneven because people will go, oh, wing nut, I know I can loosen that. Okay, what about control panel, your key? Mm -hmm. Is it easy to reach? Mine does have the armrest kind of in the way. I can't see my key actually. Uh -huh. So like when you go to turn it on or off, you either have to just feel for it or know where it is or lean over. Pretty good ways. Okay. So Toro did not add an hour meter to this one. There's no hour meter there. There's the option to add an hour meter to either. There's a slot on your control panel for it. Mm -hmm. But 
there's not an upgrade there. There is an upgrade on the PTO switch. I like that PTO switch. This is the newer style rocker switch. They last a good bit longer than those. They're on the grandstand. You're not on pulling the on them yep. and breaking them apart. But yeah, I think I have good sight line here. I can see this control panel. I access it real easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've never had any complaints about this control panel because I've just been used to it. But after sitting on that one, it is much more accessible. Parking brake. On this unit, it's an electric parking brake. So you can hear it turn on and off. On and this unit is back to a mechanical brake. When the handles go out, a lever, piece of metal. all thread metal, yeah engages the brake in the transmission. And when you bring the handles in, it pulls it off. It's a pretty flawless design. There's no electrical component that can get wet, mm -hmm. can fail, can keep your mower from starting. Yeah, the electric brake box that's on this and some of the smaller ones has been a failure point on the time cutter and maybe a pain point for some of y'all. Yeah. Or if you see some reviews out there, that can be a point of failure. And it's tied into your tire safety uh, system so if that is acting up, your mower won't start and it won't do a lot of things. So I like seeing that they went away from the electric parking brake. That's like how they used to do it back in the early 2000s. And mm -hmm. that's a very nice way to do it. Just manual, pull it off, pull it on. Easy peasy. Simple. I'm simple. glad it's, glad simple is back. Yeah, yeah, I would high five an engineer about that. Oh yeah. Came up with that idea. No doubt. All right, what about deck lift system? Yours looks a lot beefier. This one, you push this pedal down to kind of take some weight off and you lower it and you have half inch increments on the side here and it can go all the way up to four and a half. This one, you have a magnetized pin. This is similar to the systems we see on the 2 and the 4000 series. It is pretty dang effortless. It's actually really nice. The other one, when you're using your lift handle, mm -hmm. it does feel like you have to kind of awesome. exert some force to pull it away from the um, like yeah. the razor yeah. that locks it in. Yeah, I think I like this system better. Also, the highest cutting setting on this one is four and a half. Mm -hmm. And on this one, you have bigger tires. It's sitting up higher. So you now have a five inch setting. That is going to be a huge feature for a lot of our customers down here in Florida. Yeah. Something to mention with that is if you were to hit like a big root or a bunch of bumps with this, this particular mechanism can have a tendency to even pop out and drop a few inches. Yeah. And that won't be able to happen with that. It would bounce up and fall back onto its proper height. Yeah, true. Okay, what about speed control? So on the 23 model 50, you had a speed control lever that changed the forward speed of the mower without changing the speed of, of the blades. I like the feature in, in theory, but it really just wasn't something that got used a whole lot. Once yeah. you became a comfortable operator and you realize that you have all the control of your speed right here in your hands, it's something that you didn't use anymore. Yeah. And that, that has been eliminated on the 24. And I think people don't realize, but this also kind of changes the way your hydraulic functions and it's the way it feels, like the strength of it. And like you can't back up on hills as well in turtle mode. Yeah. And so you have some more complaints of people saying, hey, this thing's not reversing quickly or whatever. That's usually because they're in the wrong mode. They should have advanced all the way to rabbit, but they're still in turtle. Yeah. And um, that's hard to explain to people, so. All right, what do you think about the storage box? That came out, it was a new feature that you had a place to put your gloves, your pruner, your cell phone. This one, the pruner box is gone. Yeah. I have one. I. Very rarely do I see people ever use it properly. I usually see a couple old rotten oranges in there yeah, and a bunch of debris. Yeah. But not usually. I can see it. it's a nice thought though, um, but I just don't see people using it as much as you think you would. Do you have like a cubby on the side next to your cup holder? Yes, and, and the cubby on the side is actually shaped for a cell phone. It is vertical. I would say it's five inches long and it would fit an iPhone or an Android really well. Like up and down? Up and down. Interesting. It would fit a pair of pruners real nicely too. I would say the focus groups decided that this storage container was just not necessary. Yeah. And so they kicked it out. Yeah. What about the discharge chute? Same discharge chute. Anti-scalp wheels. Look in the middle. Same? Same. That one's hung on the other side, but you have three. 
on the front, mm -hmm. none on the back. How is your deck hung versus how this deck is hung? This one definitely has a su superior deck hang. Hmm. Let's see, you are on. That deck hangs just right. <laughs> it makes me want to get the grill out. Get the meat. <laughs> <laughs> on the 2023, you're hung by three points. On the 2024, you're hung by four points. And you are hung by chains and it looks a lot more secure. Actually, you're hung more than four. You're hung by one, two, three, four, and then you have this bracket, which is your fifth, or six. Yeah. Six. Look right here. This bracket is a very beefy feature. This is something you see on the Titan class and on the Grandstand class, this type of bracket that holds the deck. It holds it flat as you go on slopes and things so that it contours with the mower and with the slope rather than drooping with gravity. Another feature while we're standing, the deck four pan. To access the deck on this, I have to lift the mower up. I pull a pin out here and I can lower the deck from the machine itself and work on the top of the deck. But on this, the 2024, you actually have a deck pan. This comes out and it's a rather big hatch. So it removes everything in the way and gives you excellent access to clean your deck, to change a belt, to change a pulley. You can work on it without having to even get underneath it. Cleaning your deck off after every mow is very important yeah. for the life of your deck. And if it's really bottled up and hard to access, you're not gonna do it. You don't do it. But if it's easy, pop this off. These covers are toolless as well. You pop the covers off, you crank your blower to blow your driveway, you blow your mower deck off, your deck's gonna last forever. Yeah, to blow this deck off, I can't blow it from the top. I can kind of get down here and blow it a little bit, or I can get maybe this angle and blow it, but I'm not getting that pockets like underneath the belt covers and such very well. So much more difficult to blow off the old style. Okay, next up will be tires. Those are 11 inch tires. These are 12 inch. So tires in the front, to me, these look like better tires and they're taller. In the back, on the back we have 18958s and they're turf saver tread. And the back here we have 2010 8s with kind of a wild looking tread. It looks like a mud tire. It's not our favorite look because we are entrenched. We've been in the game for so long, we're traditionalists, and we really like seeing a turf tire on a mower like that. Yeah. Who knows? We'll see how the, what the world thinks of it. You, and know? you know, use those tires until they go bald, and then you can price them and see if you want to go turf. Tire we we stock 2010-8 turf. Yeah, you could yeah. easily switch over. Yeah. You, uh, another, another big change here is to the frame. Oh, yeah. Big change to the frame. The frame on the 23 is C channel. It is flat steel bent in the shape of a C. It appears to be a tube, but if you reach your hand up and behind, hollow. it's hollow. So it's kind of like a unibody. It's all molded and crimped around together. It's very it's, strong. It's strong. We don't ever see it fail. I've never seen one bent. No. It's strong. But as you go to a commercial mower, or in this case, commercial styled-esque, yeah. um, you go to a tube frame. So this this is fully tube here. Yeah. And this does go all the way back to your engine plate. The front end has some extra added gussets that the tube nestles into and that's all welded. So it's a really reinforced area. And they did away with the aluminum forks. Cool idea at first, but it corrodes over time. It kind of looks bad. It gets a little pitted over time. We've never seen it fail. We did like the idea that they were serviceable, that if you bent your frame there or you damaged that housing, you didn't have to replace your whole mower over that one piece. You could just purchase this and bolt on. But in the real world, we just never saw it happen. Yeah, it never broke, and so it wasn't necessarily necessary. It did allow them to use wider ones for different models so they could maybe save cost. Yeah. Which put wider ones on your smaller mower if you wanted to be crazy, mm -hmm. like a bug. But I like that it's painted. I like that's going to look nicer longer mm -hmm. than this will. All, I think that'll hold its resale value longer if you plan on maybe upgrading over time or buying another one in a few years, that one will hold its value. Yep. On the 23, you did have a place where you could see your fuel level. And if this was full of fuel, you could see that below a certain line was dark and above was light. So you knew your fuel. On the 24, you do not have a fuel gauge. You do have a translucent tank, which is a cool thing that Toro does and not a lot of other people do it. 
So you can lift the seat and you, you're looking at your tank and you'll be able to see if it has fuel in it or not. But realistically, even this window, people weren't really using it. Like, they weren't paying attention to it. No, you're sitting here and you're probably just gonna run out of gas anyway. And then you'd be like, darn, I'm out of gas. So something we say all the time is there's, on a mower, there's three components that really matter. If one of those three components fail, you've almost totaled the mower. And that would be the engine, mm -hmm. the hydro, mm -hmm. and the deck. These have identical engine, hydro, and deck. It's really just a matter of features, aesthetic, and I would say Toro has hit a home run. They've done a great job for the same money, yep. giving you a lot more with the 2024 50 inch time cutter. It's much beefier, better thought out, mm -hmm. more comfortable, ergonomic. ergonomic. Chip and I came, walked into this showroom last week and yeah. saw it for the first time, and he hated it. I did not like it. I was a little nervous. Just like when a new model of car comes out of a car you've loved, yeah. and you may or may not like it. And we sat here and had the same discussion last week, and... Uh, I'm a believer now. I convinced him. Yeah, you're a good salesman. <laughs> you're good. No, but there are just so many helpful features that they added that yeah. it does make this one seem like you're getting a little less. Even though this is a great value, yeah. And if you want one of these and trust it, which I do, I think they're fantastic. It's not a bad option. But yeah. if you're kind of debating between the two, I do think you get more for your money with the new one. And we know it's going to cut well. We know the engine's going to last a long time. And the transmissions are amazing. Yeah. So you got what you wanted. I got what I wanted. The core components. All the same. All the same. Minus Ooh. an electric brake. That I, was like your one if I pain point. Yeah, if I could have had a dream. That would have been eliminated. Yep. And then add some cool, nice, sellable features. You got a great machine. Thank you, Toro. You did it again. <laughs> you done did it again. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching. And if you like reviews and want to know more about mowers and what to buy for your lawn, we are here to be your guide. <laughs> we are a mower shop. We're in Central Florida. We'd love to meet you and be your shop. Give this video a thumbs up. Maybe leave a comment if you guys want to see something else reviewed. Take it easy. Bye.